understand, Lee, help us understand the mechanism behind these disorders. So the mechanism we believe now behind these disorders really begins with studies of a very rare neurologic disease called Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease. About one in a million people get the disease. You can describe it as Alzheimer's disease on fast forward. So the brain degenerates from the first symptoms until death within three to six months, whereas in Alzheimer's disease you get a profound dementia, but it takes ten years. And we're talking about even slower problems with Parkinson's and Huntington's. I was looking for a virus that would cause Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease because four years before I began these studies, the disease had been transmitted into monkeys and apes at the NIH. And I kept looking and looking, and there was no virus. There was no genetic material of life, DNA or RNA. There was only protein. And as I began to investigate this further and further, first identifying the protein with a large number of colleagues uh, helping me, uh, then it became clear that the protein was changing its shape. It's quite clear now that different proteins cause different diseases. We've been hearing about Parkinson's disease. and We've been hearing about uh, Huntington's disease. And you see this little chart in which there are six different degenerative neurologic diseases. Each one has a different protein. But in each case, we now believe that the protein is changing its shape or conformation, as scientists talk about it. Um, and in some cases, smaller pieces of the protein become very important. Uh, what happens is that when the protein adopts the prion form, and you see that after the red arrow, uh, that prion form feeds back and it grabs the normal form of the protein and makes another prion form. Mm -hmm. And more and more the normal precursor is converted into prions. And eventually the cell gets to be very unhappy. The neurons don't function properly. And the way the brain tries to deal with this is to make fibers, long fibers, and these fibers eventually end up coalescing into what we call plaques in Alzheimer's disease on the very left, uh, into tangles uh, in the second one. And we see that in Alzheimer's disease. We see it in football players who take their lives. Recently, Junior Seau is an example yes. of this. Um, we see it in soldiers. Uh, that's just beginning to be appreciated. Uh, what's often called post-traumatic stress disorder. Some, some number of these people, and we don't know how many, have tr chronic traumatic encephalopathy, or CTE, like the football players. And then you see the next one is a Lewy body. This one's inside the cell, just like the tangle. And then on the very last uh, panel, uh, we see a nuclear inclusion, that very dark brown dot in the cell in the upper left right inside the nucleus, that represents an aggregate of the Huntington's protein with an expanded uh, CAG repeat or polyglutamine sequence. So we're now beginning to get an entirely new appreciation for what's happening. And one of the things that has come from this generalization where it begins, there's data being accumulated by investigators working on each of these diseases to argue that they're all prion diseases. We see this self-propagating altered shape. The altered protein, the prion form, aggregates. It forms those inclusion bodies in the nucleus. In Parkinson's disease, synuclein, a different protein, it aggregates and it forms the Lewy bodies that we heard about. So we're now beginning to piece this all together and it has huge implications for how we develop therapeutics. It also points out something which one didn't realize before, how these diseases propagate from one structure in the brain to the other, because these toxic aggregates are released by cells, they're taken up by normal cells, and these normal cells essentially become infected, if you yes. will, and they ultimately die. This is an extremely profound unifying insight that just really crystallized out in the last few years in, with the detail that we now understand it.